podcast with me Carly hope you are all well witches I thought I'd give you a bit of an update on my week this week that nobody asked for this is the week I had the clever idea to go to the cinema and watch Evil Dead Rise and spent four nights with the light on in my bedroom I tell thee, I'm not cut out for films like that, absolutely traumatised. There are even daytime scenes in that film that did me, so I'm now perpetually on guard for some demonic thing to come and get me. I'm a lover of ghosty, demon-type films, and I thought I was desensitised to this stuff, but it appears not. If you love a horror, definitely check this out. There are some cheesy bits in it, but I loved it and hated it for being petrified. But we are not here for film reviews. We are here for a book review. With Beltane just passed and gardening and herbs on my mind again, I thought I would tell you about my absolute Bible when it comes to herbs and vegetables and growing and eating them. Recently, I spotted this book on a cottage core pick on Pinterest and had instant nostalgia because my mum, who is the greenest witch I know, had this book when I was a kid and it has always been her first go-to book. For context, my mum, honestly, she is the greenest fingered person I know. She worked for years as a gardener for a rich sheikh who owned a huge estate in the country, you couldn't make this up, whose words when he first spotted her was, who is that Viking goddess out in the garden? Which given my mum's six foot stature and colouring makes absolute sense to me. So she now runs several community gardens since she retired. Honestly, she impresses me so much when it comes to all things green. She's just a natural with it. So I bought this book purely from the cover and nostalgia of my mum having it. When I told her that I bought it, she did say to me, this is one of the books that she always refers to. So I knew it was a go-to with all her knowledge when she said that. So for all my mum's green fingeredness, you can guess that I didn't get it. So I need a real easy book to decipher. And to be honest, practically every other book I've looked into, it just doesn't have all of this information. This book is a big beast in terms of all of its contents. This book is called Food from Your Garden by none other than Reader's Digest. Let me first say, I remember as a kid, my nan and granddad having those little Reader's Digest folders with different books and so on in. And me thinking at that time, it will be a cold day in hell when I own a Reader's Digest book. But alas, today is that day and I'm here for it. This book was originally printed in 1977 and has had several reprints. My copy is from 1987 and damn, she's a beauty. I personally think this book is really the Green Witch and Kitchen Witch's Bible. This book covers everything from planning your garden to soils and manures, making your own compost, sowing seeds. It has an A to Z to 100 fruits, vegetables and herbs, a food grower's calendar, home preserving all your produce, foraging so it gets into fruits and berries, green foods, mushrooms and flowers how to make your own wine. And when I say there is every single wine in here you could ever imagine, I have to steer clear of that chapter. And for those lucky witches that have the space or time, it has a section on keeping chickens and bees. 
This book is huge. And honestly, you really could rely on this book alone for all your witchy garden produce needs. Again, with me being nothing like my mum on the growing front, this book is really easy for me to grasp. Can we just talk about the illustrations in this book? If you get the chance to Google the cover, it is giving real cottagecore vibes. And throughout the book, it is illustrated with the most beautiful pictures. It has dated so well. There are tons of recipes in this book and explanations on how to cook all the fruits, herbs and veggies. I bought mine secondhand for £8. You can pick these books up loads of places online such as Amazon, eBay. Also try World of Books. This is an amazing website where I started buying all my witchy books secondhand. They all look brand new. They are a fraction of the price as well. By no means sponsored by them. I wish it was because I really love their website. So I thought today we would have a look at what I thought was the humble dandelion. But be prepared, this plant definitely has some real surprising associations with necromancy, the underworld, Hecate. There are many folklore associations. So join me after the break to talk all about the dandelion. So let's look at the dandelion. I originally started researching the dandelion for our hedge witch studies over on Patreon, but I was so taken with how much witchy association and folklore that is linked to what I thought was a very humble little plant. I felt I had to bring it to the podcast. Dandelion's Latin name is Taraxacum officinalis. It has folk names such as cankerwort, lion's tooth, priest's crown, swine snout, white endive, wild endive, piss a bed and tell time. It's linked to the element of air, it has a masculine energy and it is linked to the planet Jupiter but also the sun and the moon. It's linked to the zodiac sign Sagittarius and many deities from Hecate through to Brigid, Odin, Balder, Dionysus, Belenos, Apollo, Zeus, Ra, Osiris, Isis, and Aphrodite due to her bees. Its magical properties are increasing psychic abilities, aiding in divination, astral awareness, dream work, spirit work, Dandelion is associated with the underworld and necromancy. I mean, who knew? It grounds emotions, can be used in purification, cleansing, spells for happiness, luck. It dispels negativity and depression, abundance, fortune, opens the heart, balance, solar magic, wishes, creativity, courage, confidence and healing. A wonderful addition to the witch's garden, a plant with many magical and healing uses and not to mention an addition to kitchen witchery. Dandelion is said to have originated in ancient China in the 7th century before spreading throughout most of the world. When the Puritans left Europe for the new world, they brought dandelion with them for their gardens Dandelion was then considered an essential plant for both health and food. The dandelion can be the bane of many gardeners' existence. However, there are no weeds for witches and the dandelion is an incredible little doer with many uses, which we will cover today. Many gardeners ensure they pull the dandelion up from the roots, ensuring the whole root is pulled as they grow back. This demonstrates the dandelion symbolism of resilience. 
it has the ability to return from apparent death. For such a sunny little plant, it holds a lot of connection to the underworld, a plant that is said to belong to Hecate. This plant holds cophonic energy and, like I mentioned before, is associated with the underworld and necromancy. As a plant, it is said to have a birth, death, rebirth theme, along with being used magically to summon spirits and protect one from dark magic and spirits who mean you harm. A plant that is loved by bees, goats and pigs, animals who all have a certain underworld nature. Aphrodite connects to the dandelion through her bees that are sometimes referred to as little priestesses. Throughout folklore, bees were also seen as psychopomps. In many magical systems, dandelion is associated with growth and transformation. You may wish to use it in spell work relating to Jupiter and the planet's energy relating to growth, legal matters and luck. It can be added to any spell to enhance it due to its wish-granting properties. Some argue the dandelion is very mercurial and associated with the element of air, which explains its connection to communication with the dead. Each part of the dandelion has different magical correspondences and all of it can be used. The seed heads or puffballs can be used in spell work for luck, happiness, divination, protection, travel, communication and wishes. These puffballs are like small clouds that float through the world and this links them to the air element. Collect puffballs through spring and summer and blow the seeds in the wind to release your wishes to the universe. For luck, carry a dandelion puffball in your pocket or keep one near your front door. To increase happiness, put a few seeds around your home or place of work. And for protection, carry them with you when traveling and sprinkle some around your property. If you want to use dandelion puffballs for divination, write your question on a piece of paper and very gently place it plus the seed head into a pouch. Sleep with the puffball next to your pillow and in the morning, blow the seeds into the air. Your dreams will be prophetic for a number of days after. Talking of dreams, should you dream of dandelion, it is a prediction of a happy marriage. Moreover, it suggests not just a happy marriage, but a happy and long lasting marriage. Additionally, to dream of a dandelion is to be taken back to our childhood because as children, many of us plucked a dandelion and blew on its seeds. To use dandelion puffballs for communication, whisper what you need to tell another into the puffball and release the seeds. The message will be carried on the wind to them. The seed heads have traditionally been used in foreseeing how long you will live by the number of seeds left after it is blown. Telling the time, blow three times and the number of seeds left is the hour. I'm sure that's very accurate. The flower can be associated with love, healing, strength, courage, joyfulness, hope, friendship, loyalty and faith. You may want to try making your own magical oil using some dried dandelion flowers. You can simply add it to a carrier oil. However, do not use the flowers if they've been treated with pesticides. So obviously be careful where you take them from because it will contaminate the oil and make it unsafe to use. I know you know this, but... And also my dog actually loves to take aim when he has a pee at dandelion heads. So obviously that's another thing to consider as well. Mm -mm. (laughs) The dandelion's flower can be used in love spells and rituals If you are looking for a new romance, try writing down your desires on a piece of paper and placing it under a bowl containing some dried dandelion flowers. Focus your intention on finding love, then leave the bowl overnight. In the morning, throw away the contents of the bowl and burn your list. Alternatively, you could carry around some dried dandelions in a pouch 
to attract love into your life. If you need healing energy, place some fresh or dried dandelion flowers on your altar or somewhere else in your home where they will not be disturbed. Visualize yourself surrounded by white light as you meditate on the plant. You could also make a healing tea by boiling some dandelion flowers in water and drinking it while visualizing yourself surrounded by the white light. The dandelion can be used to represent strength, courage, and joyfulness in spells and rituals. Again, to invoke these energies, you could carry around a pouch filled with dried dandelions, add some to your altar, create a tea, focus your intention on being strong, courageous, and joyful as you drink the tea. You can also use it for friendship or loyalty from others. Same, do a little pouch filled with dandelions, add them to your altar, add them to a tea, focus your intention again on attracting loyal friends into your life as you meditate on the plant when using it. The dandelions, leaves and stalk can be used in spells and rituals for protection, purification, prosperity, courage, strength, fertility, and defeating negativity and healing. To use the dandelion's leaves in magic, gather them on a sunny day. And to use the stalk in magic, cut it cleanly from the ground, hang the stalks upside down to dry, and it is said that you should use them within six months. The dandelion's leaves, again, can be used in spells or spell bags for protection from harm, hexes, or negative energy. The herb can also be added to cleansing baths or burned as an offering during purification rituals. Dried and powdered leaves can be sprinkled around your home to attract wealth and prosperity. To use the dandelion stalk in magic, you might want to add it to charms for courage and strength before undertaking a difficult task. You can also burn the dried stalks as part of fertility rites or weave fresh stalks into reefs worn by those seeking conception. The roots digging deep into Mother Earth and pulling her energy up to greet the sun are excellent for ritual work involving grounding, stability and centering. Dandelion root is also invoked for purifying and cleansing as well. To remove the influence of negative entities, it is said you should wear dandelion roots, carry roots in your hands or place them at the corners of rooms and doorways. And additionally, cleansing baths are also wonderful when crafted with this plant's earthy elements. If you wish to connect with Mother Earth more, you might want to drink a cup of dandelion tea containing the roots prior to meditation. It is said to help open your connection to nature. Drinking an infusion of the dried and roasted roots is said to enhance your psychic abilities. So you might want to drink a dandelion tea containing the dried and roasted roots prior to divination or spirit work. And an old custom I came across is that you pour boiling water over a bowl full of dandelion roots. And this was said to aid in summoning spirits, if that is your bag. The dandelion holds the element of fire through the flower and its solar energy, the element of earth through its root system, and the element of air through the puffballs and its communication themes. You can use all the pieces of the dandelion in magic relating to money and abundance for its ability to grow anywhere and abundantly. Dandelion comes from the French word dent de lion, meaning tooth of lion. I have no idea if that's how you pronounce it. I just, it's it's giving me French vibes. I'm sorry for any French listeners. I do apologize. Symbolic of its tooth-edged leaves, 
use in spell work linked to the lion. But for me, it's giving a lot of Leo energy because of the lion. Also use it in spell work linked to solar energy for the dandelion is all about the sun. I can't help think of the strength tarot card when I see the dandelion because of the lion themes. And for me, I don't see the dandelion with its tooth edged leaves as why it has this name. For me, the petals always look like a little lion's mane, but that's just me. With the dandelions themes of hope and new beginnings, you could use it in spells to jumpstart projects or break creative blocks. But also if you need some assistance relating to creativity and inspiration. I know this plan is like got the Sagittarius themes, Sagittarius even. But for me, it is just screaming Leo at me. Also with the confidence and the courage themes as well. So it's very easy to come across dandelion. And I think that anywhere we are, I think it is a plant that all us witches can access and use in our witchcraft should we wish to. But should you wish to plant dandelion in your garden, it was said that you should plant it in the northwest corner of your garden to bring favorable winds and luck. Although the dandelion wilts easily, they do press well. So you may wish to add them to your book of shadows or grimoire for some positive solar magic energy. Dandelion holds much solar energy with its bright warm yellow flower, yet its white puffball is said to represent the moon. It is the perfect metaphor for the sun and moon's relationship the sun, the flower, shines, fades and dies only for the moon, the puffball, to rise in its place. But the analogy continues. The seeds from the moon spread and give birth to a new sun. But that isn't where the concept ends. In fact, some people extend the metaphysical meaning to include the stars. The individual seeds, when caught on the wind, act as the stars in the sky. Norse culture equates the dandelion flower with the sun itself. So you might remember we talked about how the name dandelion refers to the plant's jagged teeth-like leaves. Well, if you think it's odd to name the plant after its leaves than after its flowers, then you'll appreciate the dandelion's old Norse name, the sunshine of Baldr. Baldr, the son of Odin, and importantly, a symbol of light and peace. He was so beloved that when he died, the earth mourned his loss. In fact, the flowers wilted and all things that grew turned brown and died. It was only the world's green things that grieved about the loss of Baldr. The gnomes also suffered from the great melancholy. They missed Baldur's light and warmth, so much so that they decided to visit Odin to lament their sorrow. Odin, full of sympathy, gave the gnomes a gift to ease their pain. Odin gave the gnomes the gift of Baldur's sunshine, and the gnomes shared this sunshine with the world. They shared the dandelions with the world. According to Greek mythology, Theseus ate dandelions every day for 30 days to prepare for his battle with the infamous Minotaur. He ate dandelions because he believed they would increase his power. It worked and he was able to defeat the Minotaur and save the people of Athens. Whilst we're on Greek mythology, I'm going to refer to the Queen herself, Cindy Brannan's book on entering Hecate's garden and her description on the dandelion. This humble plant offers us a great deal of symbolic energy. Like Hecate, the dandelion represents the three worlds and our three selves. The pervasive roots remind us of the importance of underworld energy that all that exists is born from the dark depths of the earth. The emotions, the dominant force of the lower self are deep and vast. They nourish our minds and inform our actions. 
The golden flower reaches toward the upper world, showing us that the abilities of the higher self stretch up to the mysteries of intellect and mysticism. At the middle world, the stalk and leaves are the active part of the plant, growing and spreading like our actions. The persistence of dandelion to grow anywhere and its refusal to yield to attempts to destroy it are a mighty lesson in living our truth. Dandelion reminds us that conformity is quite boring and requires way too much effort here, here. Thus, the message of dandelion is just to be you, from your emotional roots to your intellectual curiosities. Hecate comes to her devotees in many different forms as well. Let you be you and let your Hecate be yours. She also talks about offering to Hecate dandelion. You might want to make a wreath made of dandelion on the dark moon or at any time. You could wear it during your ritual and then offer it to her by placing it around a statue or leaving it at the crossroads. She also describes drinking dandelion root tea after deep work in order to help us manage the post-ritual mess. Dandelion brings the body, spirit and mind into synchrony while synthesizing our experiences and guiding us through the muck of transformation. As a root, dandelion releases its properties much more easily through the decocting process. To make a decoction, simply add a spoonful of plant material for every two cups of water. Bring the mixture to a gentle boil for about five minutes, then cover and let steep for five more. If you're feeling too fiery from your ritual, chill the decoction and drink it cold. Too cold, drink it warm, add honey and lemon to taste for enhanced support. You can also make this ahead and freeze it into ice cubes to have ready for after your ritual. Defrost it in boiled water and mix with honey and lemon. That is from Entering Hecate's Garden by Cindy Brannan. I've previously reviewed this on the podcast. This is an amazing book, especially if you work with Hecate, but also for any hedge or green witches. We are currently reading Entering Hecate's Cave in the Literary Witches Coven for May. If you would like to get involved with that, there will be links in the show notes. On February 1st, the Irish celebrate the feast day of Brigid. This is relevant to the dandelion because Brigid has two symbols. The first is the lamb and the second is said to be the dandelion. So dandelion is a perfect offering to any of the deities that you may work with associated with this plant, or you could use it in spell work to draw their power into your work. Dandelions also stand for longevity. This is because the dandelion will start to flower early in the growing season and continue flowering throughout the summer and into the autumn. In some mild climates, dandelions will actually continue to flower throughout the winter. The deep stretching taproot allows the dandelion to colonise difficult locations and reach deep for water. So take the dandelion as a symbol of beauty in difficult situations. Be like the dandelion, flourishing in a crack in the city pavement i.e. no matter how hostile your environment, you are beautiful. It's this ability to survive in tough situations that also makes dandelion powerful symbols of endurance and most of all, ultimate victory. So let's look at the medicinal qualities of dandelion for which there are many. It is a digestive bitter. It aids in the secretion of digestive juices. Mmm, sounds lovely. And stimulates the parasympathetic nervous system, putting the body into a relaxed state, which is helpful with digestion. It improves body health and function by increasing elimination of metabolic waste from skin, liver, kidneys, lymph and bowels. It is a diuretic via the leaf. It promotes production of urine as well as water excretion. 
Many diuretics cause a loss of vital potassium, making it a balanced diuretic that can be used safely when needed. It is a cholagogue. It stimulates the gallbladder, aiding in the production of bile. Mm. It is a hepatic. It supports the liver, an antilithic, prevents the formation of calculi, that sounds like a maths issue to me, or gravel stones in the urinary system. So when a bitter taste is detected in the mouth from dandelion, what then happens is lots of flow. Bile flows from the liver and gallbladder and hydrochloric acid flows freely from the stomach. Along with its richness of vitamins A and C, dandelion also contains choline, which stimulates the liver. Liver stimulation is important because it processes impurities in our bodies. These days, the liver has many reasons to be overrun, especially after a long winter. Digestion can be sluggish and in need of some cleansing. But also in more random treatments, the milky latex from the stem can be used to treat warts. Apply several times a day until the wart is gone. And everyone knows us witches get lots of warts if we look through historical history and different references to us. So you know we are getting on that. So for kitchen witchery, I'm going to refer to food from the garden that we talked about on our book review Odd as it may seem, there was a time when the vegetable gardens of all great houses used to contain a row or two of dandelions, carefully mulched and coaxed by skilled hands to giant size. Some were blanched like chicory. Others had their leaves, roots and flowers chopped into the sumptuous salads beloved by the Elizabethans. Dandelions are still grown commercially in France, where their virtues as salad vegetables are more widely appreciated than they are here. The usual combination is to garnish the leaves with chives, parsley and garlic and serve them with a dressing of oil and lemon juice. They are also excellent with tomatoes and a distinctive side salad can be made from equal proportions of cress and dandelion leaves sprinkled with French dressing. Dandelion leaves are at their best in spring before the plant comes into full flower. After June, they tend to become coarse and bitter, so pick the leaves when they are young and pale green. It is a good idea to blanch a plant or two in the winter Choose a couple in an unobtrusive corner of the garden, cover them with flower pots and pile manure over the pots. This will provide you with salad vegetables in early spring, as well as imparting a particularly delicate flavour to the leaves. Dandelion leaves can also be cooked like spinach. Boil them for an hour or so with a little melted butter and serve with butter and fried onions. If the leaves are too bitter for your taste, mix them with an equal quantity of spinach. Part cook the dandelions first, however, since they require longer preparation than the spinach. So fellow Cacotarians like myself, this is a recipe that you definitely might want to try. This is from theherbalacademy.com. I will link it in the show notes. It is for dandelion flower syrup. For this, you need three cups water, two cups of dandelion flower petals that are cleaned, two and a half cups of sugar, half a cup of honey, half a lemon that's chopped and a pinch of cinnamon, which is optional. In a large pan, combine cleaned dandelion petals, water and lemon, peel and all over a high heat. Bring water to a boil and turn the heat off. Cover and let sit overnight, steep in. In the morning, strain the dandelion lemon infusion, taking care to squeeze out all of the tea from the flowers. In a pan, combine dandelion lemon infusion, sugar, honey and cinnamon if you are using it. Simmer over a low heat for one to one and a half hours, stirring occasionally. Check syrup for desired consistency by dipping spoon into syrup, pulling it out and letting it cool. It should be a honey syrup type consistency. 
store in an airtight container such as a mason jar, in the fridge, serve over waffles, pancakes, French toast and more. Despite all of dandelion's many uses, it is important to be aware that too much of a good thing is not always best. As with everything in life, try to approach the use of, I feel like I'm going into teacher mode. I'm not. I'm simply reciting some of the research that I found. Try to approach the use of herbs with awareness and a sense of balance. You are all clever little witches. I know you will. People sensitive to plants in the Asterakai family may also be sensitive to dandelion, although this is very rare. Fortunately, dandelion leaf contains abundant levels of potassium to offset any loss of this mineral due to diuresis. There have been very rare instances of skin irritations from handling latex in the stems and leaves. Because dandelion has been found to accumulate soil contaminants, be sure you harvest it well away from roads, industrial sites, buildings, roofing drip lines, or any place where chemicals or pesticides are sprayed. And don't forget my little dog that loves to aim his little pee-pee at dandelion heads and pee on them. Anyway, let's move on from that thought. So this is a lovely little poem or some words that I found in relation to the dandelion and I felt it was quite reflective of us witches. A dandelion doesn't care for the opinion of others. It still grows alongside roses and orchids and that is by Aaron Dahia and I really love that. That is all I have for you today witches. I will catch up with you all next week and I'm sending you lots and lots of witchy love.